So thank you for attending this uh, short talk. Um, this is uh, another presentation in our Butterfly IQ series. I'm Christopher Viscopoulos from Medical Specialist Associates. Our group is big on the Butterfly IQ. It's so convenient to carry around that we're finding ourselves using more ultrasonography and echocardiography than ever before because of the convenience. However, there are some limitations with the Butterfly IQ at the current moment in that we have color Doppler and M mode. But we don't have pulsed and continuous for some of the more elaborate measurements, but we're trying to maximize its use. And so one area that we can use it for is in right ventricular function assessment. And then in particular here, we'll talk about tricuspid annulus plane systolic excursion, or better known as TAPSI. So how do we obtain a TAPSI with the butterfly? Well, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get our typical apical four-chamber view. And here we have an apical four-chamber view that we can say here. And what do we want in particular in the this apical four-chamber view? Well, we're gonna to wanna to have the tricuspid annulus right here that's bouncing up and down this particular segment in view. Now, in an ideal world, you'll have that lined up as perpendicular as possible, but what usually happens is that we get it at an angle here of approximately 20 degrees or so, and that's just fine. But we do need to have this tricuspid annulus in view. So when we have that tricuspid annulus in view, then we can go ahead and we can put our M mode on. So again, M mode is just a single dimension of ultrasound. Uh, that's in comparison to the 2D mode of ultrasound that we just saw in our prior image with the apical four chamber view, that's a 2D image. And with some of the more sophisticated machines these days, we can get 3D images. But for M mode, it's a single dimension. And so here we see our M mode coming down. And what we do is we put it right through the tricuspid annulus. Now that tricuspid annulus will be contracting toward and then relaxing away, toward and away. And that's what we see up here. What we see here is that this right here is toward the probe, and then it goes away. And this goes towards the probe, and then goes away. So what do we want to do? Well, we're interested in how well that right ventricle is contracting. So we're interested in the distance between the trough and the peak. And that tells us how well it's contracting. So we put our calipers on, and we first put our first caliper down here at the trough. And we come across here to a peak, and we take that across here, and we put the other part of our calipers up here, and we get a number. And in this particular instance here, we get a number of 2.67. So now what do we do with that number? Well, in one of our other presentations, we talked about MAPSI, and there the calculation can be more complicated because we can use equations. And here, it's just more common to look at the raw number. And so said simply here, the normal rate, what we do is we convert the number into millimeters, and the normal range is between 25 and 35 millimeters. And an abnormal threshold is less than 17 uh, millimeters. So in our particular example, we had a value of 2.67 centimeters. So we convert that to millimeters. So converting the millimeters, we have a value of 26.7 millimeters. And that is within the normal range. So there are a lot of positives for the uh, TAPSI. It's usually pretty easy to get an apical four-chamber view. It's easy to reproduce in the ICU. So if we get a particular patient maybe who has a PE and we want to examine their right ventricular function, and perhaps maybe they receive TPA or half-dose TPA, and we want to see how their right ventricular function is doing, well, this is easy to reproduce. Or if we're treating someone for pulmonary hypertension and there's right heart strain, and we're lowering that pulmonary hypertension, say with Flolan or Milrinone or Nitric or different agent, well, this is pretty easy to reproduce. Now, some of the negatives of the TAPSI, there aren't too many. You don't even really need to have a great apical four-chamber view uh, to get this. You just need to have that tricuspid annulus in plane. But in not everyone, you can get an apical four-chamber view. In some people, maybe you can only get a subcostal view. Um, so in those particular individuals, you wouldn't be able to use this. Thank you for watching. Please send feedback to the e uh, email address listed there. Thank you again.